from the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. Today, to say the least, we have a show, a program that I know you're going to be astounded to hear because I learned so very, very much from Jack while we were preparing the program for you. First of all, was Karl Marx, the founder of communism, a professing Christian? Going on. A former Christ Community Church removes the cross of Christ. And is the United States now on a slippery slope to socialist tyranny? Oh, my, oh, my. We're going to be dealing with all of that and very, very much more. I think you'll agree with this statement. Some of the most respected men in American history are the men who held the office of president. And we are going to take a look at some of those men who held the office of president. First of all, in God we trust. That is exactly what the ones on the screen wanted to say when they were in office. This is, of course, our first president, George Washington. And he said, in God we trust. Going on, then there was John Adams. In God we trust. Once again, Thomas Jefferson. In God we trust. And once again, this was not a president, of course, but Benjamin Franklin, that famous statesman, in God we trust. And here you see a picture of some of the presidents. Forty-three men held the office of president. You'll probably recognize the picture of some of them there. Wonderful men. And many of them said, in God we trust. I quoted to you several times that statement. Four words. Very important. And I would ask Jack, to which God were they addressing their faith? In God we trust, Jack, to which God? Well, most of our presidents have been great Christians and stood for the Holy Bible and the Word of God, especially George Washington and Abraham Lincoln, many others in our day. But Rexella, right now, God Christ and the Bible is being attacked like never before, and a lot of it has to do with atheism and socialism. Atheism, they are even beginning to run ads now, though there are only 1% of the population of America that they put on buses mocking the fact that there is a God. And I'm going to say this right now. Psalm 14, 1 and chapter 53, verse 1, both state, the fool hath said in his heart there is no God. Look. Some morning, stretch your face to the heavens and quote Psalm 19.1, the heavens declare the glory of God. He created it in the beginning. God created heaven and earth. You know why I know there is a God? Because we are one galaxy. And now they tell us that there are at least a billion, maybe up to a trillion galaxies out there each with 200 to 400 million suns, and it all just came into existence. Bing, bang! That's like saying, see this wristwatch I'm wearing? All this junk was lying on the floor. Boop! There was a watch. You have to have a pygmy brain to believe that kind of nonsense. Now, who is the God that all of these great leaders of America accepted? Well, in Exodus 20, verse 3, the first commandment says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And that's the Trinitarian God. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Father's name is Yahweh. The Son is Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is the Comforter. And that's paraclete, translated into a comforting. A trinity, yes. God says in Matthew 28 and 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The one name is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 13, 14, The 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And guess what? These three are one. A little seven-year-old boy was asked to explain the Trinity. He said, I don't know a lot about the Bible, but let me tell you this. Three and one, and one and three, and the one in the middle died for me. He was smarter than some of these ministers and theologians today. But if you don't believe there are one, 1 John 5, 7, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, Christ, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. I believe God. Yea, let God be true, and every man an atheist and socialist a liar, Romans 3, 4. You know, Jack, I like that little boy. He had it right. You know, he had it right, simplistic faith in the Lord. Well, let's ask Jack something we're going to be talking about an awful lot here today, the difference between democracy and socialism. What is the difference between democracy and socialism? How about it, Jack? Democracy is a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. They are in control. Socialism is a government-controlled citizenship. They have nothing to say. And as I was studying all of the different names today, Hitler and Nazism was really socialism that could lead to Marxism. And maybe even communism, though Hitler was opposed to that. But definitely socialism. And his party was the National Socialist German Workers Party. And boy, did he control them. Heil Hitler! And if you didn't pay attention, to be dead. Not only did he murder 6 million Jews, but he murdered 11 million Gentiles. And through him, 50 million died in World War II. Socialism. Obey me or else. Then we had Stalin. Do you know what? He was studying in a Russian seminary to become a Russian Orthodox priest, and he got involved in socialism, rose to the top, start governing the people. If you don't obey me, you'll be killed. And another 50 million were killed by that savage. And then we had Mao Titsong, Chairman Mao. And of course, you know, his was communism. North Korea, communism. Many of the Oriental nations are communistic. And he murdered 100 million of his Chinese people. And right now, Hillary Clinton tells us that Ahmadinejad of Iran is a dictator who is going to take over the military and the country. And who's his big buddy now from Venezuela, Chavez? And he says, I am dropping the mask of democracy and he's already taken over the media of his nation. This is a dangerous, horrible thing and it's coming to America probably through present administration, as you're going to see today, shocking quotes. Under socialism, yeah, under socialism. Yeah. Well, in my wildest dreams, I never imagined that Karl Marx, the famous atheist, remember, and the one who embraced socialism, Marxism, communism, was uh, at one time in his life a professing Christian. Can you believe that one? But take a look at this. Here is the cover of a book. Was Karl Marx a Satanist? Now, this is a very, very interesting article by the same person here. Jack, would you like to read that about Karl Marx, please? Oh, this is touching. In his very early youth, Karl Marx was a Christian. His first written work is called The Union of the Faithful with Christ. There we read these beautiful words. Through love of Christ, we turn our hearts at the same time toward our brethren who are inwardly bound to us and for whom Christ gave himself in sacrifice. Then, as he went to college, he embraced socialism and something mysterious happened in his life. He became profoundly, passionately anti-religious. A new Marx began to emerge. He writes in a poem, I wish to avenge myself against the one who rules above. I hate all gods. I worship Satan. Then, when the time came for his death, in his poem, the pale maiden, he wrote, Thus heaven I forfeited. I know it full well. My soul, once true to God, is chosen for hell. That's true of most socialists. Oh, isn't that sad? Do you read that with Jack? Isn't it sad? You've got a man who said, I love God, I love people. He turned against God, he hated people, he became a Marxist, a communist. Oh, what a terrible, beginning with socialism, of course, and then Marxist, communism, that's how it goes. 
And it's wanna... known for him today, Marxism, yeah, communism. Absolutely. Well, I've got a question. 